We are here back at the Fantasy Bar. Six plays for you for week 16 on FanDuel and DraftKings, including a couple running backs I think are too cheap in the mid-range. Some of my favorite value plays, my favorite stack of the week, and of course, my favorite play, who are we talking about? Belly up to the Fantasy Bar and find out. Welcome in, guys. Week 16 edition Beers Daily Fantasy Six Pack as we tick towards the end of the regular season. We are here with six more plays for you on the main slate on Fandle and DraftKings. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. Happy holidays to everybody out there as well. Now, before we get into the plays, as always, let's hit that thumbs up button, guys. Greatly appreciate that. You guys have been crushing that. So thank you for that. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Get notified when these videos are coming out doing multiple football videos, a betting video, basketball video. So get that subscription going. Make sure you're notified when these videos are going out. And if you're into sports betting at all, check out scoresandodds.com slash beer for all of your sports betting needs. That link right there in the description of the video, but tons of information there. I promise you're going to like what you see there. Go and check it out today. All right, let's get into week 16 here on the main slate. Let's start with one of those running backs I mentioned in the opening. We're going back to the well on Javante Williams of the Broncos. So I fully realize this is still a committee. Melvin Gordon is not going away, but we're starting to see the pendulum swing a little bit in favor of Javante Williams. We look at a snap count from last week. You're going to see a 44 to 31 advantage here for the youngster. And Melvin Gordon's still dealing with some injuries as of this recording. So if Williams' piece of the pie is going to grow, really want to be overweight on him this week in my DFS contest. We're talking 16 or more touches now in every one of the last four games, averaging over 20 touches over that stretch here. And Vegas been terrible against running backs this year. Third most fantasy points allowed to this position. So Javante Williams still too cheap, even in that committee with Melvin Gordon. Love this spot from this week against the Vegas Raiders. All right, let's get you a value play at wide receiver. We're going to Tampa Bay with Tyler Johnson. Now I realize the headliner this week will be Antonio Brown returning to that Tampa Bay lineup. Certainly no issues with Antonio Brown as a play. Gronk will also be a guy people go to. But Tyler Johnson, the guy I'm really expecting to step up here. We know Chris Godwin going to miss the rest of the season. Mike Evans questionable as of now, but more on the doubtful side, it seems like even if Evans plays, I still like Tyler Johnson. We know they love to utilize these three wide receiver sets. If Evans is out, all systems go here for Johnson, for me. Going to be off the radar for sure. I don't think you're going to get a ton of ownership on this kid, but look good in that ugly game against New Orleans. Seven targets there. Great pedigree coming out of the University of Minnesota and Carolina bottom 10 in the league in touchdowns allowed to this position. So just simply too cheap here in a Tom Brady led offense. Tyler Johnson, great value this week on both FanDuel and DraftKings. All right, let's continue the value at tight end. We're going to roll with Cole Komet of the Bears. Now tight end, once again, ugly position here. So I'm going to go cheap rather than spend up on some of the premium guys. Still have some question marks with those guys. Don't have Kittle on this slate. But Cole Komet, a guy whose role is really starting to grow in this passing game for Chicago. We know they've been without Allen Robinson, so it's really slim pickings here. Outside of Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, probably the second target in this offense, and we are certainly seeing that. It's averaging eight targets per game over the last month. No touchdowns this year for Cole Komet, which I found very surprising here. Seattle been very giving in that department. Eight touchdowns so far to this position. So I think that's a nice little marriage that we can put together there. Maybe Cole Komet finds the end zone here, but Seattle not been good against this position. As you'd expect, you give up eight touchdowns. You're likely giving up a lot of fantasy points, and that's certainly the case. Six most to this position. Cole Komet, another great value here this week on both sides. All right, let's go back to the running back guy really high on this week. Sure a lot of people are. James Robinson of the Jaguars. So yes, this is chalk. He's going to be a popular play, no doubt. But this is going to be a popular play for a reason. James Robinson in an amazing spot here against the New York Jets. Too cheap on DraftKings. I mean, under 6K for this guy is a steal. Vandal probably priced where he should be, so maybe ownership isn't as high over there. But I like him for a lot of different reasons on both sides. First of all, awful game last week against Houston. Houston ends up rolling them. Still got 21 touches in that game. We know Carlos Hyde was placed on IR. No Urban Meyer either. So there's a lack of competition here. So it gives us that workhorse price at a committee back price here, especially on DK. Like I mentioned, at just 5,900 and the Jets, the matchup does not get any better than this team. 21 rushing touchdowns already allowed. Absolutely the most fantasy points allowed. It's not even close. 
Let's keep pounding this matchup here. Let's go back to the well on James Robinson this week against the New York Jets. All right, back to the wide receiver position. We're going to spend up a little bit here on Jamar Chase of the Bengals. So coming off an absolute dud, Cincinnati goes to Denver, gets the win. It was an ugly game. Jamar Chase literally did nothing in that game. So I think you're going to see a lot of people shy away. We know a lot of the newer players, the masses tend to look at, what have you done for me lately? They're going to pass on Jamar Chase here at this price tag. I think that's a big time mistake. If you think back to the last time he played this Baltimore Ravens team, we saw a massive game out of Chase. Eight receptions, over 200 yards receiving in that game and a touchdown. Baltimore been terrible against wideouts, seventh most receiving yards allowed, 11th most fantasy points to this position. Expecting a big bounce back here for Jamar Chase at a discount in the ownership department. Sign me up here on both sites this week against the Baltimore Ravens. All right, it's time to take a look at my favorite play for week 16. Before we do that, we want to continue our Beast of the Week contest. A thank you to you guys for hanging out in the fantasy bar, checking out the video. All you got to do, get in the comment section right below the video and guess fantasy points on DraftKings for my favorite play of the week. Closest guest is going to win themselves a free month of Roto Grinders Premium. Chance to check everything out behind the scenes. Without further ado, let's wrap this baby up. My favorite play for week 16, you know, Mass, the beast of the week. All right, Beast time, we still owe you a quarterback, so we're going to pair up the aforementioned Jamar Chase with his college quarterback, his pro quarterback, Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals, this week's Beast of the Week. Now, Joe Burrow has been phenomenal this season. I know there's been some down games, some ugly games. We mentioned that game in Denver, but all in all, we're talking about seven games where he's gone 20 or more DraftKings points so far this season. Again, we went back to Baltimore on our Jamar Chase tape. Let's go back to it here on Joe Burrow as well. Obviously, Chase has a big game. Naturally, Burrow does as well. His best game of the season, 416 passing yards in that one. Over 30 DraftKings points in their last matchup here in Baltimore. As you'd expect, pretty good against the run, not so good against the pass. We're talking bottom 10 in every major category against quarterbacks, passing yards, touchdowns, fantasy points. Point is Cincinnati in a great spot here at home. A chance to show the world that we're here, we are for real. And I think they do that on the right arm of Joe Burrow, making him easily my favorite play of the week in this week's Beast of the Week. All right, guys, that wraps up for week 16 here in the Fantasy Bar and FanDuel and DraftKings. As always, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, hit me up in that comment section right below the video. Don't forget, Fantasy Points for Joe Burrow on DraftKings for your shot at some free Roto-Grinders Premium. While you're there, let me know who your Beast of the Week is. Who's your favorite play of the week? Sound off in those comment sections. Also, make sure you head over to scoresandodds.com Last beer, check out everything you need to know. Sports betting wise, premium picks as well. If you don't have time to dig through all the information, we're giving you those picks. Go get some winners, scoresandodds.com slash beer. And last, head over to fanduel.com slash OG. Come play against Notorious Head Chopper and myself in our single entry $7 buy-in tournament. Again, all the information you need at fanduel.com slash OG. For rotogrinders.com, I am Beer saying salut guys. Best of luck this week again. Happy holidays to you and your families, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, thanks for checking out our videos. If you want more expert advice on DraftKings, FanDuel, or any other daily fantasy sports, make sure you check out the current videos playlist.